a very good morning to all so uh, i am dr arunathi banerji consultant pediatric neurologist associated with neotia bhagirathi hospitals rodden street so today i thought it would be a pertinent topic to discuss about childhood epilepsy with special reference to infantile onset epilepsy so at the outset i would like to tell you what uh, we should discuss what is epilepsy so epilepsy is the enduring predisposition to have seizures so with that the question arises what is seizure seizure is an abnormal electrical activity that is generated in the brain of a child that can result in motor manifestations and altered sensorium so that a child with a seizure can have various types of motor manifestations so now what is the difference between a child with epilepsy and a child with epilepsy that starts in early infancy and how does it affect our treatment and uh, and the mode of operations so with that i would like to first find out uh, or tell you what is infantile onset epilepsy and how is it different so it is different because the causes are different the causes are entirely different here and coming to the causes it can be structural in which the mri in or in the brain there is some abnormality which is picked up on the mri and so it is a structural epilepsy the next type of epilepsy that we have in infancy is genetic so genetic often the parents they come and tell me no we don't have anything of the sort running in our family but let me tell you that genetic need not mean that it runs in the family so there are various patterns of inheritance of various diseases and it can still be genetic if the baby's genes are affected so we have the structural epilepsies and we have the genetic epilepsies next we have a very uh, a exotic kind of epilepsy which is called neurometabolic epilepsy now what is that so in our body if we have to explain in simple terms there are some enzymes in our body which actually uh, help in the various chemical reactions at the cellular level so if the enzymes are deficient then there can be accumulation of some unwanted products in the body and that can cause neurotoxicity and can cause epilepsy so this is a simple way of explaining what is neurometabolic epilepsy and in that we have certain other subdivisions that is we can have vitamin responsive epilepsies so there are some vitamins and epilepsies are particularly responsive to these vitamins only so even if we treat with other medications which are our standard anti seizure drugs let me tell you they do not respond only when you add these vitamins to your standard regime of treatment will the child respond and let me tell you that the earlier you can get seizure freedom in a child who is seizing the better will be the neuromorbidity or the better will be the neurological outcome on follow up of this child so it is very important that in the neurometabolic epilepsies we determine whether they are vitamin responsive epilepsies or not. and what are the vitamin responsive epilepsies we have pyridoxine responsive epilepsies we have biotinidase uh, deficiency that leads to this epilepsy so we have to give a trial in these kids who present with epilepsy so early of pyridoxine which is b6 and biotin and of course folinic acid which is the active form of folate or folic acid that we commonly use in order to see if they are responsive because as i have already said that the standard anti seizure drugs will not act in these kids and they will only adhere to these vitamins when added to the standard regimen besides there are also some channelopathies now what are channelopathies so in our body there are some sodium potassium calcium channels and these channels can be mutated they can be genetically affected so that their actions are their normal actions are not performed 
In that case, they can lead to aberrant actions, which can lead to aberrant altered signal changes in the brain, in the neurons, which can lead to epilepsy. So we have calcium channelopathies like KCNT1 and we have sodium channelopathies which can lead to severe epilepsy. Now what, why is it important for us to know that whether this epilepsy is due to channelopathy or not? Because of the treatment options and the treatment implications. Because if we can identify a sodium channelopathy then a particular group of drug will be suitable for the, those kids and they will be better off and well controlled with that group of drugs. Whereas a particular other group of drugs can actually aggravate the situation and increase the epilepsy. So that is why it is very important. So these are the causes of epilepsy which occur in infancy. Now how do we investigate these kids? We have to in a seizing child who comes to the emergency, we have to do the basic management of controlling the seizures and monitoring the vital parameters of the child. For that, we need a good setup here at Nyotia Bhagirathi hospitals. We have an able emergency management where we can see what are the parameters which are deranged and also monitor the oxygen saturation. We have an ICU, an ICU facility not to see that the kid is well controlled and the seizures are well controlled and then we have to go one by one depending on the standard protocol of drugs we have to control the seizures so this is a acute management and for investigations we have to find out by what is the cause so as i said before the structural can be determined by imaging so imaging we can do offhand we can do a ct scan or a usg ultrasonogram of the brain and then if we don't find anything we can go for an mri brain which will help us to further delineate with accuracy and definitely apart from the blood parameters which are usually monitored for infection because that has to be again ruled out in a child with seizures who comes to the emergency and then of course I have spoken about the genetic and the vitamin responsive epilepsies and the neurometabolic conditions so we have a metabolic testing which can be done which is very simple which can be done from a dried blood spot of the baby by heel prick and also from the urine of the child or the extended metabolic panel will give a crude idea whether there is some metabolic derangements associated with the epilepsy and of course we have to do genetic testing if a child presents with epilepsy in the infancy. So to summarize how is it different? How is infantile onset epilepsy different from childhood epilepsy? So childhood epilepsy again can have a lot of causes but what is special about infantile onset epilepsy is these causes that need to be delineated and hence the treatment strategy can also be different. Therefore the addition of vitamins, the addition of specific drugs in order to treat channelopathies becomes of utmost priority while dealing with the situation. Hence the awareness is required a lot amongst parents and amongst the caregivers. So if they have a seasoned child who has presented very early in life, then they may, must come to a trained qualified pediatric neurologist who is well equipped in a center to deal with these problems and to suggest the therapy as required. With that, I would like to end my session and thank you for your patience here.